Phil Spencer once said, if we lose our way with Halo, we lose our way with Xbox. Well then Xbox is lost in the woods without a map or a compass because where is the Halo? For the second year in a row, there was not even a peep, not even a mention or a wink or a nod of the Halo franchise within the Xbox Bethesda showcase. Halo is iconic to Xbox. If it wasn't for Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2 and Halo 3, we don't know where Xbox would be or even be around. Master Chief is essentially Xbox's Mario. The two are synonymous with each other, like peanut butter and jelly, cookies and cream, Xbox and Halo. So when Xbox goes out to hype up everyone about their brand, Halo is always expected to be there. But like I said after the recent showcase, this marks two years in a row of silence on the side of Halo. Though this year, I kind of expected it to be honest, but last year it definitely shocked me and the rest of the gaming community. The reason why we were shocked last year is because the game just came out and Xbox hyped up Halo Infinite as much as they could. They even released a 20 year anniversary special edition Xbox for the release of the game. Halo Infinite was on every single box that you bought of the Xbox series consoles. But sadly, we got nothing back in 2022. But in hindsight, now it kind of made sense as Halo Infinite was not ready to be a live service game. Why would Xbox promote a game where season two lasted 10 months? Now Halo Infinite has had some great updates with Forge, custom game browser, improvements to desync, ping fluctuations, better events, better battle passes, better store prices, season three as a whole, and a lot more. And now 343 has finally achieved that seasonality cadence that was promised to Halo players before launch and season four is looking good. Bringing back infection, you have career ranks, new maps for arena and BTB. You got amazing updates when it comes to Forge, for mode objectives, forerunner objects, visual effects, budget improvements, version notes. You have a new equipment coming in to kind of mix up the sandbox a little bit with the quantum translocator, as well as the threat seeker. And finally, legacy zoom, which that's the reason why I'll actually come back to play team snipers because the way the zoom mechanics work in Halo Infinite now, are pretty awful. You have cross core armor and weapon coatings for battle pass and premium items, as well as sandbox nerfs and updates that we talked about previously on the channel here to help kind of mix things up a little bit, get things a little bit more balanced. So season four is looking to be a great season to help sustain the player base. But then you gotta think about it. Why did Halo Infinite Xbox is almost should be premier live service game not get showcased within the Xbox showcase, but these other live service games did get their time to shine. Games like Elder Scrolls Online, Sea of Thieves, and Fallout 76, all live service games that were showcased, but not Halo. But what these live service games are doing that Halo Infinite is not doing, and that is bringing new experiences for people to play to expand upon what's already there. Season four for Halo, it's not doing that. And from a lot of the announcements that we got from the Xbox Bethesda showcase of coming in 2024, fall of 2024, we're not gonna get anything really that notable for Halo Infinite for quite some time. Imagine being a casual Halo player who played back when the game first came out, you played the campaign, you played some multiplayer, got bored with the lack of updates and just kind of moved on. Is Halo Infinite really any different from launch? Yes, but essentially it's the same game you're still playing team slayer on like live fire bizarre streets now there is some variety with dlc and forge maps though overall the gameplay is kind of the same as it was at launch would you really expect your casual gaming audience to get excited to play infection again you know one of those game modes that we've been playing for 20 plus years much like we've been playing team slayer being team battle feels like Halo Infinite's in a constant state of just trying to capture that nostalgia, almost be like nostalgia bait the platform and kind of relying on that a little too much to incentivize people to jump back in and play. Career ranks coming into Halo Infinite is a fantastic addition. I'm so glad it's finally here. Some long-term progression is a great way to incentivize people to keep playing the game but it's not a reason to play the game. Like I said, season four is a great way to maintain player counts to keep the current player base satisfied, but it's not really a strong season to give players a reason why to jump back in to play Halo. Let's all be honest with ourselves on this one. Ask the question, does season four have that wow factor for it?
I'd say no. And that wow factor is needed to get your game part of the Xbox showcase. Which then you're probably asking, okay, Kevin, what would get that wow factor to get people to jump back in to play Halo, get Halo back on the main stage to be on that Xbox showcase? Well, I would have to be something kind of crazy, like a crazy new game mode, like that rumored Tatanka Battle Royale mode. Obviously, we all have our feelings with Battle Royale, but we can't deny it. it's still the biggest game mode out there for any shooter. Look at all the major shooters out there. They're all live service in some capacity or a Battle Royale. Or you would need to have some campaign DLC to help expand upon the experience of Halo Infinite. And if 343 and Microsoft were able to cook something up like campaign DLC, you know for sure they would promote the heck out of that. It'd probably even get like a significant showcase maybe almost to the level of the Starfield showcase, which was incredible. So a crazy new multiplayer game mode or campaign DLC is something that greatly expands upon the value that the game has to offer. 343 and Microsoft just don't have something like that to show for Halo, hence why it wasn't at the showcase. Now the majority of the Halo community are kind of down bad because it's been two years of absence of Halo, but I've definitely seen the counter argument to that saying, well, Halo didn't need to be at the Xbox showcase because we had that season four preview at the HCS event. And when I hear that, I just can't help but think that is like pure, just Halo echo chamber copium. During these Xbox presentations, you have the attention of the entire gaming community. For example, the Xbox games showcase on Xbox YouTube channel alone has almost 3 million views compared to the HCS season four preview that we had, 53,000. Halo Infinite season three trailer is sitting right about 375,000 views. Not too shabby for itself for it's kind of a casual live service update trailer. Now, YouTube views aren't everything and not a pure metric of what the attention and what the interest is on each game and each platform and things like that, but it gives you a sense of scale as YouTube is the premier platform to watch any video on demand content. But you also have to think about this. Would Halo Infinite be doing better if it was at the Xbox showcase this year? Honestly, I don't think so. That hurts to say coming from a lifelong Halo fan. Season four and looking to be the near term future of Halo, it just seems to lack that wow factor to get people to want to jump back in and play like, oh my God, I need to play this game. And beyond just the near term of like season four and even 2024, it seems like the future of Halo as a franchise is really up in the air. Very credible insider Jason Schreier reported saying that 343's campaign team was hit really hard by the Microsoft layoffs. Other reports saying that campaign DLC was only in a conceptual stage and at best it had prototypes and rough concepts drafted in the Unreal Engine. Jason Schreier also reporting that the franchise as a whole is looking to pivot from the Slipspace engine over to Unreal 5 as well. Also 343's role in Halo is changing to much more of a management type of team, similar to what we see with the Call of Duty franchise and their supporting studios where you have the main three who kind of guide the ship, but you're surrounded by hundreds, if not even thousands of support developers around those main three. So why would Xbox have Halo Infinite in their showcase when they don't even know for sure what they're going to do with the franchise? While at Summer Game Fest, Matt Booty and Phil Spencer did provide a very slight amount of insight into the Halo roadmap, and this is what he had to say. You're talking about next year, you said 2025 too. How many years ahead have you sort of even in the back of your mind, have an idea for based on conversations you're having with teams on projects that might be very, very early in development. Well, we were just in Obsidian on Friday and <laughs> saw a pretty good roadmap. I mean, when you start to think about, you know, what's the future of Halo? What does that roadmap look like? When you mm. start to think Ed. about... <laughs> yeah, and... <laughs> Machine games. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Where's Wolfenstein? Uh, Where is yeah. Wolfenstein? Okay. So Microsoft is just trying to figure out what to do with Halo during this hiring freeze and complete shift of the management at 343. Because from what we've seen, effectively most of the head management has left 343 since the launch of Halo Infinite. People kept crying about fire 343, right? Well, effectively, you got it because all upper management has been deleted. So has Xbox forgotten about Halo? 
No, but they just don't know where it's going. 